Welcome back to Evergreen Nurse channel. Today we can see one important topic that is respiratory distress syndrome. It is one of the common problem mainly occur among the preterm babies those who born before 35 weeks of gestation. This respiratory distress syndrome is otherwise called hyaline membrane disorder. Let us see the definition of respiratory distress syndrome. Respiratory distress syndrome is common in preterm babies. It is mainly caused by insufficiency of surfactant production and the immaturity of the lungs. Now we can see the incidence. It is mainly common among the preterm babies and the baby born male than the female. It is one of the common cause for death among the neonatal period. Around 1% of the preterm babies are died because of RDS. So, multiple birth babies, those who are born twin or triplets are more affected with the respiratory distress syndrome than the normal or single tone baby. Let us see why RDS is common in preterm. Preterm baby born before 35 weeks of gestation are not have enough amount of surfactant in their lungs. So, surfactant is a lipoprotein. It start to produce from 26 weeks of gestation by type 2 alveolar cells. Lung will produce enough amount of surfactant around 37 weeks of gestation. The main function of surfactant is it help to lower the surface tension which keep the alveoli from collapse especially during the expiration so that breathing will be easy. So, you can see this picture. There are two pictures. First picture that indicate the normal alveoli. The blue color indicate the presence of surfactant in the lungs. So, when there is a surfactant, the lung become maintained stable and the alveoli will, will not collapse. But in case of RDS alveoli, there is no surfactant. So, there will be increased surface tension is present. So, during the expression, the alveoli is collapsed. So, you can see these two pictures and you can compare the when surfactant is there, the alveoli is not collapsed. When there is no surfactant, the alveoli is collapsed. Let us see the pathophysiology of RDS in detail. Due to etiological factors, there will be a decreased surfactant production. The decreased surfactant production that increase the surface tension of the alveoli. When there is a increasing the surface tension of the alveoli, the lung will not function properly that lead to collapse of the alveoli. This collapse of the alveoli lead to hypoxemia and the carbon dioxide retention. This both the things lead to formation of acidosis. So, because of the acidosis, there will be a pulmonary vasoconstriction and hyperperfusion that occur in order to compensate this hypoxia. So, after this hypoxemia, there will be a capillary damage. It is mainly occur due to decreased blood supply. Then there will be a plasma leakage due to, due to this capillary damage. Finally, the lung function will be deteriorating and the lung cannot function properly. Then this lead to respiratory distress syndrome. Let us see the clinical manifestation. First one is the cyanosis, then flaring of nostrils, tachypnea. Here there is a rapid breathing. The respiratory rate is more than 60 breaths per minute. Grunting sound, especially during the expiration and the chest retraction. As the disease progresses, the child will have the respiratory failure. Now we can see the investigation. Chest X-ray reveal ground glass appearance that indicate RDS and aminosynthesis to identify the lecithin sphingomyelin ratio it should be above 2 is to 1 ratio that indicates the lung is mature then shake test in postnatal period here the gastric content should be aspirate and we have to do this test this negative result shows the lung is immaturity then we have to auscultate the chest to identify the air content when there is a diminished breath sound that indicate the child is having some kind of collapse of the lungs and the arterial blood gas analysis done which shows the arterial pco above 65 mm of hg 
though normal upper limit is only 45 mm Hg, in arterial PO2 there will be a 40 mm Hg even though the normal limit is only 50 mm Hg. And also we have to see the principles of management of respiratory distress syndrome that is improving ventilation to enhance oxygenation, correction of acidosis, adequate thermal neutral environment, adequate nutrition management of the baby. Let us see the nursing management. First we have to monitor the baby condition. Baby should be nursed in thermo neutral environment by keeping the baby in incubator or radiant warmer so that thermal neutral environment is maintained because the all the babies are exposed to RDSs mostly uh, premature so they can't maintain the thermal neutral environment on their own so they need the support of radiant warmer then hourly monitoring the respiratory rate is very essential we have to assess for any evidence of grunting and any evidence of cyanosis and the apneic episode make the baby to stay nilpar oral and maintain intake output chart you have to start with the IV infusion that is 7.5 percent sodium bicarbonate and administered with a dose of 3 to 8 milli equivalent per kg in 24 hours if need we have to administer total parental nutrition also in order to prevent tissue catabolism then administer oxygen under positive pressure it help to prevent collapse of the lungs and improve the oxygen suppose even with this the baby uh, condition is not good then we have to put the baby in the positive end expiratory pressure that is PEEP. Preterm with respiratory distress syndrome should be prevented from infection by using isolation and aseptic precaution. The critically ill infant should be minimally handled. These infants should be positioned with the head elevated to reduce the pressure on the diaphragm. The surfactant therapy is one of the therapy. It helps to improve the lung function. It is administered intratracheally via a T-tube in a dose of 100 mg per kg body weight. This therapy lead to improved oxygenation and reduction in oxygen dose required by the patient. Antibiotics are routinely administered to treat any pulmonary infection. It should be given as per order. Monitoring the vital signs is regularly is very essential. Endotracheal suctioning should be done as required. Using strict aseptic technique is very essential. Monitor the oxygen saturation is very essential. Whenever there is a need for suctioning, you have to suction the uh, airway and keep the airway patent. Measure the baby weight daily. Administer IV fluid, nasogastric fluid and the medication as per doctor order. Then prevention of RDS. The best way to prevent the RDS is by reducing the incident of prematurity by appropriate management of high risk pregnancy and by avoiding unnecessary or poorly timed cesarean section. If pregnancy is cannot be maintained at term, mother should be given injection that is dextromethasone 1 to 7 days before delivery its help to improve the maturation of the fetal lungs. Let us discuss the complication of respiratory distress syndrome. The first complication is pneumothorax. There will be a retinopathy of prematurity, chronic respiratory infection and the pulmonary interstitial emphysema. These are the various complications that occur due to the respiratory distress syndrome. Till now we have discussed regarding the respiratory distress syndrome. I hope this interactive class will be useful for you. Thank you for watching. Please like, share and subscribe.